right, last couple pieces. Here we go. Let's get this thing together so I can test and check and, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Come on! Really? A quarter inch? You ever have just one of those days that nothing goes right? Well, here it is. Let's fix that, shall we? So today I'm gonna to show you this short little video on how to take Bachman Easy Track and custom make a length. Um, if you've ever ran into making a custom layout with Bachman Easy Track, you know that sometimes it can be a little frustrating where you will get to a section and you're either a quarter inch long, a quarter inch short, and you're trying everything you can to make something fit. Um, you know, generally on a circle or an oval, it fits fine, but when you're trying to do something custom where you've got extra radiuses, uh, turnouts, uh, track yard and everything else, and then you're trying to line something up, you could always be a quarter inch off. Now, Bachman does sell a little pack of little adjustable pieces, and sometimes you can actually make those pieces fit to kind of get you close to what you need. The problem with that is now we've got a whole bunch of extra joiners in there and stuff. Now, if you're going to use this on a main layout that you want in, sometimes I don't want to have all these extra joiner pieces in there. Um, you can certainly solder them together and everything else, but these packs cost money. And you know, with, with the economy right now, money is tight and sometimes we don't want to do that. So. What do you do? What happens? You, you don't have this, you don't have the option to be able to buy this, but you do have an extra piece of straight track. So I'm gonna show you how I turn around and I'm gonna actually custom build this piece using a piece of straight track, a Dremel tool, a hot melt gun, a pair of pliers, and a chop saw. Now, you can also do this with just the Dremel tool and just the tools that are here. But I like to use a chop saw because it gets a cleaner, straighter cut. Um, but let's go ahead and, and show you kind of what you're gonna need. And you're also gonna need a tape measure and a pin. So first thing we're gonna do is as you can see, I've already got some marks down on my table here showing you know, just kind of a layout of, of where I'm at, what I'm short and everything else. Um, when I run a tape measure, I always add my extra inch because that gets me more accurate for my lines. I never try to go off this end because if you ever mess with a tape measure, that tape measure can fluctuate about a sixteenth of an inch. And that will move just a little tiny bit. And so that can actually mess up your measurement here. And you certainly don't want your piece to be out of whack or lined wrong. You want it to be as smooth as possible. And I put my one inch mark right on the mark that I need it to be at and my other mark. So I'm at five and three quarters inches is what I need for a measurement. So, first thing we're gonna do here, we know it needs to be five and three quarters, so we're just gonna write that down on my table right there. We're gonna take the pliers, you're gonna grip the sides, and you're actually gonna pull the rails all the way out. Now we're gonna turn around, and we're gonna cut this piece off. To do that, we need to measure over, we're gonna split this down. So I'll, five and three quarters, I'm gonna cut a three inch piece and a two and three quarter inch piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna set it at my one inch mark so I get a good even spot. So I've got one inch, two inch, three inch right here. And I'm gonna put a mark on the track. So a three inch mark there, same thing over here on this side. We're gonna turn around, go over, three inch, mark it down. All right, so there's my three inch piece for this. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, except this time we're gonna do two and three quarters. So one, two, three quarter. One, two, and three quarter. All right, so this is what we're gonna cut out now. So we're gonna take this over to the saw, get this chopped out, and then come back and we'll work on the railroad pieces next. All right, so when you make sure that we're getting ready to chop the blade, Make sure that you're taking in consideration which side the blade is actually going to cut on so that way you get a good clean cut. Everything's against the back fence there. We got one piece out. We're going to turn around and do the same thing.
Okay, so I've got everything cut down now. I did realize I made a mistake, guys. Um, originally, when I laid this thing out to measure it, um, I added my inch and it measured out to five and three quarters. While I forgot to subtract that inch, it should have been four and three quarters. So I ended up having to chop off an extra inch of this. So there's a two and three quarter inch piece and a two inch piece. And as you can see is now that I've measured that out and laid that up, I'm exactly the measurement that I need to be at for this piece here. Um, now you are gonna end up with some burrs on the end of it, um, just like what you get on your uh, track and stuff. Those actually can just pop off with just a finger. Do the same thing to the other side. Um, if you wanna clean that up even more, you can take a block, a sanding block, and just kind of lightly sand those pieces out. You can also take a file to it um, and clean those up that way. If you've got a six inch or a 12 inch disc sander, you can turn around and flush those out those ways as well. I've already cleaned these pieces up down here, so I'm not gonna worry about those. But those are just some options to clean up if you want to. If you don't have those kind of things readily available, like I said, you can just peel off the pieces and if you're gonna ballast your track, it's gonna cover it up fairly decent and you're never gonna see that part anyway. All right, so now we gotta cut our uh, rails to size. So we need to match it up exactly to the very, very end. We're gonna take a pin and we're gonna mark our other edge on the other side. All right, so now we got those set down. I use a block to help stabilize my uh, track piece here and then we'll use cut slow and steady okay all right now take a block to it you can take a block you can take a file just try to clean those burrs off so now that we've got all of our pieces in here and we just lightly clean up the edges. Now it's time to put the rails back together. Okay, so set your pieces in. Be careful as you're setting them in. Sometimes you can take a block of wood, you can take your um, You can take your block of wood, you can take your pliers to it, anything to help bring that into piece, into place fairly decent. And we'll set this other one into place. And there we go. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is actually take our hot melt gun and glue this seam down. Um, so as you can see, I finally have the new piece put into place. Um, and you can see the difference of the quarter inch in there and everything else. Uh, the track lines up really good. Get down here where you can really zoom in on the, the rails. Everything's flush, looks good. And now we no longer have a joint sitting in between there. We've lessened the amount of joints, so better connectivity. And, uh, you know, as we cover this up with ballast, if we do that, it's, it's gonna look so much better. But this is a quick way to adjust your track lengths if, if you're running either short or long on track pieces and you need a custom built piece and you just happen to have some extra straight track laying around. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Um, hit that like and hit that subscribe button so you can be made aware of future videos. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Have a great week everyone and take care.